Spider-Man has an interesting relationship with the Marvel Cinematic Universe at large. In fact, the production companies at Disney and Sony essentially have shared custody over the cinematic rights for Spider-Man as a character, with Sony essentially lending the character to Disney so that he can appear in the MCU along with Disney's and Marvel Studios' other superheroes and Avengers. Because even though Spider-Man is technically a Marvel comic and Disney owns Marvel Comics, the movie rights for Spider-Man were sold to Sony a few decades decades ago, many years prior to when Marvel Comics itself was bought out by Disney. And with that, Spider-Man's previous appearances in the MCU are interesting, mostly because the wall crawler has become entrenched in the MCU's interconnected continuity. After all, MCU's Peter Parker was introduced during the crossover film Captain America's Civil War. His idol and father figure is Iron Man, i.e. the most important Avenger in the MCU. And Spider-Man's primary goal in these films is to become an Avenger, which is the MCU's biggest block blockbuster brand. And due to this, MCU Spider-Man's previous films, whether it be his own movies like Spider-Man Homecoming or Spider-Man Far From Home, or his appearances in crossover films like Avengers Infinity War, have made this incarnation of Peter Parker inseparable from the MCU. His personage has consistently been tied to it. Spider-Man No Way Home appears to continue this trend at first glance. After all, this newly released Spider-Man adventure co-stars Benedict Cumberbatch's Doctor Strange and features villains and characters from the Sam Raimi and Mark Webb era Spider-Man films like The Green Goblin and Dr. Octopus, and on the surface it seems like this movie does the same as the other Spider-Man MCU movies and crossover events that tie Tom Holland's Spider-Man to the MCU, with the film appearing to additionally fuse the older Sam Raimi and Mark Webb directed Spider-Man films to this continuity as well. And in that way, No Way Home gives the illusion that it's like those other Spider-Man MCU movies. But Spider-Man No Way Home is different from past MCU Spider-Man fare, and this is actually a good thing. See, as good as past MCU Spider-Man movies like Homecoming and Far From Home are, they often functioned as Marvel movies meant to embed Peter Parker into the Marvel Cinematic Universe at the expense of being fully realized Spider-Man narratives. In fact, these films were both tied to Peter's non-relative familial relationship with Iron Man and Spider-Man's desire to be an Avenger rather than being fully 100% centric Spider-Man stories. Which, let me make clear, doesn't necessarily make these movies bad. In fact, I really like them, especially Spider-Man Far From Home, but these films narratively dual function as Marvel Cinematic Universe films and Spider-Man movies, Homecoming especially, and aren't exclusively Spider-Man stories, seeing as Tony Stark and the Avengers played heavily on Peter Parker's mind in these films, just like how a delectable bowl of cheese tortellini weighs heavily on mine. Yet, Spider-Man No Way Home is a different vehicle. Despite its appearance as another attempt to further tie the Spider-Man franchise to the MCU, this is the first MCU Spidey film that feels like a true Spider-Man story first and foremostly, with any interconnected continuity stuff being secondary for the most part. It is a film that really focuses on Peter Parker as a character, as a young superhero who can act selfishly at times, but ultimately tries to do the right thing. And as a result of all these things, Spider-Man No Way Home is awesome, easily the best MCU Spider-Man adventure yet. It's a lot of fun, it's humorous, it's playful, yet gets really narratively serious when the moment is right. The fan service is incredibly tasteful. There are themes about helping the mentally ill, which I relate to. The action is exhilarating and inventive, and the movie has that trademark Spider-Man angst, the one where he tries to put his own desires over the needs of others, because Spider-Man can be kind of dickish at times. And with that, this movie rules. It's the perfect popcorn movie that both entertains and even challenges its audience, and as a result, it's really damn good. Spider-Man No Way Home's positive elements start with its story. The plot follows Peter Parker immediately following the events of the previous movie Spider-Man Far From Home, where the now deceased villain Mysterio frames Spider-Man for the violent incident in London and reveals the wall crawler's secret identity as Peter Parker, which has placed the superhero in legal trouble, polarized the hero's public opinion, and has ruined much of his personal life to the point that even his girlfriend MJ and his best friend Ned are caught up in the crossfire and are denied in entry to a very prestigious college, all because of their association with Peter. And that's something that Peter can't abide, the fact that his friends and family's futures are being hurt. So with that, Peter seeks out the wizard, Doctor Strange, in order to cast a spell that would cause people around the world to forget that he is Spider-Man. And Strange, being the nice guy that he is, agrees to help Peter. But the spell runs into a problem. In the middle of Strange's casting, Peter changes the parameters of the spell numerous times. After all, Peter doesn't want MJ, Ned, and Aunt May to forget 
forget that he is Spider-Man. He only wants the rest of the world to forget. But unfortunately, the spell goes haywire like me trying to control a vehicle in a Forza game. I'm not very good. And causes Spider-Man villains from alternate dimensions, read the Raimi and Mark Webb films, to invade the MCU and wreak havoc on New York City. And it is up to Peter to try and send these villains back from where they came, like relatives who have overstayed their welcome on Christmas. Because we all have at least one of those relatives. Spider-Man No Way Home is a great time, and a lot of this is due to how it works as a whole and complete Spider-Man story. See, as a character in the comics and in other movies, Peter Parker's identity as a young teenage kid and the crime-fighting superhero Spider-Man are often at odds with one another. On the one hand, Peter has a responsibility to use his gift and power to help others, but as a teenager, this responsibility gets in the way of his regular life. He has a hard time balancing friendships and romance while he trades blows with some of the most heinous villains that New York City has to offer, like the Green Goblin, Dr. Octopus, and this shit lizard, named as such because he is a lizard that lives in the sewer and thus swims in shit. Shit lizard. He stinks! Anyway, the point I'm trying to make here is that Peter Parker has a hard time finding a work-life balance when he wants to live a whole and fulfilling life as a regular guy whilst trying to save the city as Spider-Man. And it's a conflict between his two egos that fills him with incredible angst, to the point that he sometimes acts selfishly, which often exacerbates perilous situations as seen in the previous movie Spider-Man Far From Home, where Peter just wants to take a vacation from this crime-fighting, world-saving nonsense and be a regular kid with his friends, classmates, and his weird teachers. But that's not how things work, because great power, great responsibility, great bumper sticker slogans, and you get the point. This is the same in Spider-Man No Way Home, but even more amplified. After all, the whole conflict in No Way Home is Peter's fault. He was the reason that the spell was botched, a spell that was being cast so people could forget that he was Spider-Man and that his friends could go to college. And the villains entering the new reality and terrorizing New York City is all his fault. It is due to his irresponsibility as a person. In fact, every human being hurt and piece of property destroyed because of these alternate dimensional shenanigans is on him. And that's very much in line with the Spider-Man franchise and character, because sure, Peter Parker is ultimately a good kid, but the conflict between his two egos leads to a lot of pain and heartache that Peter shares some responsibility over. Things where the blame lies with him, and Spider-Man No Way Home thankfully reflects this very well. This internal conflict in Spider-Man No Way Home is great from a dramatic perspective. The whole conflict being Peter's fault, mostly, provides Spider-Man with an opportunity to prove his heroic worth, which is terrific in terms of character development, mostly because character arcs with a wide swing provide ample room for a protagonist like Spider-Man to evolve as the parameters of the story change. And thus, he actually grows a lot as a character throughout this movie, and that's just honestly good script writing. It is awesome storytelling and character development. Spider-Man No Way Home has terrific themes that go beyond that of Spider-Man as a character as well. In fact, the movie has an interesting and nuanced story regarding mental health, mental illness, and how society mistreats the mentally ill. See, when we are fully introduced to all the alternate dimensional villains like the Green Goblin, Dr. Octopus, Sandman, Electro, and the Lizard, Peter Parker learns that these folks aren't necessarily evil. They are just folks with issues that impair their better judgment. And Peter realizes that these people need to be treated with care instead of outright hostility. Much like how mentally ill folks in the real world deserve to to be treated with empathy, which speaking for myself, I say with complete confidence because I am mentally ill. After all, the Green Goblin essentially has dissociative identity disorder, Dr. Octopus hears voices in his head, and etc. And sending them home without treating them would essentially be a death sentence because most of these villains die fighting Spider-Man. And from there, the right thing to do isn't to send them home at first. The morally righteous thing to do is actually to help them, treat them with compassion, and treat their illnesses, their hentai armed illnesses, before ultimately sending them home. And honestly, that's just a great message in regards to the mentally ill, because society at large often doesn't care about the well-being of people like me until we become a threat. But Spider-Man No Way Home treats its mentally ill villains differently. It treats them with care. And while sure, there is a problematic element where all the villains must have treatment physically forced upon them instead of, you know, being reasoned with, the theme is still overall wonderful because people like me don't deserve to be treated with indifference. We deserve to be treated with care, and Spider-Man No Way Home gets 
this very right, and I love it. Of course, Spider-Man No Way Home is still a fun movie. Despite how this story contains deep themes about mental health and is a Spider-Man fable with more angst than a late 90s, early 2000s new metal record, look it up, kids, Spider-Man No Way Home is still a Marvel Cinematic Universe romp, which features lots of inventive high-flying action, lots of MCU Easter egg references, fan service from past Spider-Man films, because you had better believe that the movie features Norman Osborn proudly saying that he is something of a scientist himself. You can tell that actors Alfred Molina, Jimmy Fox, and Willem Dafoe are having a hell of a lot of fun, and there is terrific, playful, and hilarious dialogue involving Peter, Doctor Strange, the alternate dimensional villains, Ned, MJ, J. Jonah Jameson, Aunt May, and many other characters. It is a hell of a lot of fun, and even though this movie might be incomprehensible if you are out of the loop on the Marvel Cinematic Universe film or the older Spider-Man movies, because interconnected continuities gotta be interconnected, No Way Home is such a rewarding watch if you are up to speed. It is a blast. Still, with that being said, Spider-Man No Way Home has moments where its narrative stakes become heightened. Despite the film's otherwise humorous and fun nature, there are moments where this film's serious as the hell up. And admittedly, I do want to share what those moments are, but I also don't want to go into spoilers, because you'll see what I mean when you watch the movie for yourself, because things truly do get dire and unpredictable fast for Peter Parker, to the point there were two instances where kids cried in my theater whilst watching this film, creating memories that will last forever. God, this movie rules. So yes, Spider-Man No Way Home is a terrific movie from several angles. It is an awesome Spider-Man film, it's a great popcorn flick, it's a cool MCU adventure, and it can be deadly serious and thematically impactful when necessary. But with that being said, I admittedly had some reservations revolving around this film's concept regarding a Spider-Man multiverse. After all, the excellent animated Into the Spider-Verse released in 2018 with a similar concept, a movie that is arguably the best of all cinematic Spider-Man adventures, and due to this, I did originally fear that Spider-Man No Way Home wouldn't do its multiversal concept as well as Into the Spider-Verse and stand apart from it creatively. I fretted that it wouldn't be as good. But here is the thing, Spider-Man No Way Home stands up on its own merits. Where Into the Spider-Verse was fantastical and got really creatively out there, Spider-Man No Way Home is both darker and incredibly creative in its own way. It is inventive in terms of the story it's telling, its themes regarding mental health, its ties to the broader Marvel Cinematic Universe and its love of the live-action Spider-Man films and Spider-Man stories that have preceded it as a whole. It has that fun yet character angst that is needed in a Spider-Man film. It is playful yet serious. It is creative yet works on an established Spider-Man story framework. And with that, Spider-Man No Way Home is a winner in every conceivable universe. It is amazing in every sense of the word. And with that, that was the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like rating, subscribe, ring the bell, share, and leave a comment telling me what you think of Spider-Man No Way Home and the Spider-Man franchise or the MCU in general. Also, please consider checking out my Patreon page. The link is in the description. And speaking of Patreon, I just want to thank my patrons, especially my high tier ones in David Samantha Devlin, Mom, and Morgan. Thank you so much for supporting what I do. Love y'all.